what's up guys, CP Modi here and welcome back to another mini review of the Intel 545 SSD. Just like our mini reviews, these guys are short, sharp and to the point, but a little bit longer like our regular reviews. So with that being said, let's jump into it and take a look at this new SSD from Intel. So in the design department, this SSD from Intel is much from what we would expect out of Intel. With an all silver body and really nice overall metal finish, it fits in with most systems, however would definitely be fine to be hidden away behind the motherboard tray. If you did want to get a little bit custom with this guy, you could open it up and spray paint the top of it, or you could go ahead and carbon fiber wrap it, like we did up in this video, it would look really, really sick. But overall, the entire design is very simple, little Intel stamp on there, and overall nice metal body. In terms of the raw specifications of this guy, we are finding ourselves the first Intel SSD with the new 64 layer 3D NAND flash, which is actually fairly interesting to see. Jumping to other specs, we find ourselves again that aforementioned flash in 256 gigabytes per die, 64 layer 3D TLC flash, a silicon motion SM2259 controller with a write endurance of 288 terabytes written. Not to mention there's also to a five year warranty tagged onto this guy. We get the SATA interface for SATA connectivity and do note that this is not an NVMe drive. So don't expect NVMe type of performance out of this particular drive. Now speaking of NVMe and performance, let's take a look at some performance numbers and jumping into synthetics, whether it be crystal disk mark or any other synthetics that we did run, Overall, it isn't a half bad drive. Again, whilst it isn't stacking up to NVMe style drives, compared to many other SATA based drives on the market today, it does hold its own and when it comes to gaming, thanks to its large capacity, it can hold a lot of games and also to, well, keeps them snappy and responsive. Whilst I couldn't measure them, actually running the games for the benchmarks, it was very responsive and overall very snappy, load times were reduced and overall much what you would expect from running them on an SSD drive. Now do note, when it comes to these drives, they are only available at the time of recording in 512 gigabyte units. There's no 256, there's no 120, there's no one terabyte. However, there is information of large capacities coming down the line in a little bit. So today we were looking at the 512 gigabyte model, but at the end of the day, there are larger and possibly smaller options coming down the line. We just have to wait for them to pop up here. But on the plus side, this guy delivers solid performance and capacity without breaking the bank, thanks to it being based on the SATA interface without NVMe and the latest tech specs. Design-wise, it's rather minimalistic and should fit with most builds and would look really great when customized with a carbon fiber skin or if you were to go ahead and paint it up. And with its almost 300 terabyte lifespan, it also too has a very nice lifespan here. Also too, being an Intel drive, if Intel has gone ahead and applied their software correctly as they usually do, once we do reach that end of lifespan, it'll actually go into a read-only mode where you can pull all your data off without the drive dying. A lot of more budget and cheaper oriented SSDs will just keep going and going and going until that drive is dead. Where Intel differs is they actually have a mode that will allow you to read all your data off so you can copy it to an external drive, copy it to another drive or copy it to a brand new SSD and have everything go fine. You can do that for quite a while before the drive actually fully shuts down. So that is definitely a feature that you may want to consider if you are looking into high demand workloads. However, with that being said, it's kind of rare for a lot of people to actually fill out 300 terabytes of data even I haven't managed to do that on my scratch disk on my editing system. Though that being said, on the downside, we do have some limitations right here with only a limited amount of SKUs available at the time of recording, being a 512 gig option. If you were looking for smaller or larger options, unfortunately, they're not on the market yet. However, they may be coming down the line. It's also too not as fast as an NVMe drive and may disappoint some of you out there, but that's kind of it. There isn't too many downsides right here. Price point wise, we're looking at about 46 US cents per gigabyte, which actually isn't too bad on the budget, but also too doesn't come in as a bargain basement drive. It definitely is sitting right there in the middle of the product stack when it comes to Intel SSDs and a lot of other SSDs on the market with decent capacity, decent speeds, and again, a decent price point. But who is this drive for? And I have to say, anyone building a mid to high end system that wants a large capacity SSD, decent reliability, and new technology would definitely appreciate this particular drive. Whilst it doesn't blow the market away, it definitely does deliver and gives you a fairly decent SSD at a fairly decent price point. But let me know what you think of this drive down in that comment section. If you want to pick up one of these drives for yourselves, do check that description box as I've linked as many models that I can actually find at the time of recording down there. So do pick up one of these drives if you are interested. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.